Hi, my name is Adrian Kubiak, and I am a logophile, a lover of words. My word journey began when I picked up my first Dr. Seuss book when I was two, almost three years old. When I got to first grade, it was very obvious that I was an avid reader. I aced all of my spelling tests, and I zipped through phonics lessons like greased lightning. As time passed, my spelling skills did not fade. I went on to compete on the school, diocesan, and regional levels. I won my first school and my first diocesan B, but I came in second at my first regional B. When the newspaper interviewed me after the competition, I vowed to return the following year and do better. And I did! I won the Western Pennsylvania Regional Spelling Bee, and I advanced to the Scripps National Spelling Bee in 2011. To this day, I am still a logophile and a gifted speller. However, I'm no longer an avid reader. I've become busier and busier with schoolwork, extracurriculars, and other things that I simply don't have time to sit down and enjoy a book anymore. Unlike preschool and me, I would no longer define myself as an avid reader. Instead, I spend my time scrolling through Tumblr text posts and watching Broadway musicals. During one of my text post binges, I stumbled upon a post that made me stop and reevaluate my entire life. It reads as follows. I'm having a conversation with one of my friends and I ask him, what defines you? And he responded with, nothing. A definition excludes the possibility for change. This got me thinking, what's in a definition? According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a definition is an explanation of the meaning of a word, phrase, etc. The full definition reads, a statement expressing the essential nature of something. An entry in the Oxford English Dictionary says that a definition is a precise statement of the essential nature of a thing. Another states that it is a declaration or formal explanation of the signification of a word or a phrase. The word definition comes from the Latin root definir, which means to limit. Definir is derived from de, completely, and finis, boundary, end. Put those together and you get complete end. As a result, the word definition seems to have a connotation of permanence. This is not the case. I believe that this possibility of change is a crucial element in understanding a definition. I sent out a Google survey to a number of friends, family, and co-workers and asked them to define the word definition in their own words. Most of them said something along the lines of the meaning of a word. And they're technically not wrong. However, I found that it was interesting that only one person felt that it was important enough to mention this possibility of change. My coworker Carla Littleton defines the definition as a meaning of a word, action, symbol, or other method of communication that is both standardized for understanding, but also has flexibility enough to allow for social, cultural, and other aspects to alter the meaning as the application may change. Like so many aspects of life, language is dynamic. It evolves from generation to generation. This effect is most clearly seen in slang terms. For starters, macaroni. I bet you're thinking about mac and cheese right now. Yankee Doodle isn't. We probably all remember that song. Do you remember that line where he stuck a feather in his cap and called it macaroni? Well, back in the 18th century, macaroni was slang for a British traveler with fashionable clothing, upper-class manners, and a newfound love for an Italian dish, macaroni. This definition is still in the Oxford English Dictionary, although it's rarely used in this context anymore. I also found out some history on the word dude in the same podcast by Erica Ogrit. Its history also circles back to Yankee Doodle. If you take the first syllable of the second word, you get dude, D-O-O-D, which was a term coined to sarcastically describe young, fashionable men in 1880s New York City. Eventually, the spelling dude, D-U-D-E, 
became more prominent and has stuck around. Nowadays, we would probably call the dudes, D-O-O-G-S, hipster. You've most likely heard of UrbanDictionary.com. If you Google the website, the sample text describes it as a veritable cornucopia of streetwise lingo posted and defined by its readers. In other words, it's a crowdsourced digital archive of slang terms, some common, some outlandish, many comical, and many vulgar. Some of the entries that I find interesting and amusing include Special Snowflake, one who believes they are doing something unique when they really aren't, Misrepresentative, an official whose words and actions contradict each other, and Nexter Day, the day after tomorrow. Just as a fun little side note, we actually do have a word that means the day after tomorrow. It's over morrow. There is a whole section on the Oxford English Dictionary website that has information about the process of rewriting and revising the dictionary. Apparently, it's updated quarterly. Every March, June, September, and December, words are added and revised. In March 2016, the words bruh and vlog were among the new entries. Some of the words that got new sub-entries included words such as celebrity, football, foot, and familial terms such as brother, father, and daughter. However, the staff is undertaking a much more intense project. They're revising the entire dictionary. According to their website, their staff is creating a document that gives a more accurate representation of each word's history and development, as well as a fuller chronological and geographical coverage of the English language. They've been working on this project since 1993, and the revisions and progress have been published quarterly since March 2000. Since the start of the project, 25% of the dictionary entries have been updated. The OED believes that dictionaries are dynamic texts that should be kept up to date with language evolution. Anne Curzan, an English professor at the University of Michigan, is a member of the usage panel for the American Heritage Dictionaries. She delivered a TED Talk in March 2014 titled, What Makes a Word Real? I believe that she sums up my point best. We, as in the usage panel, think it's fascinating that the word nice used to mean silly, and that the word decimate used to mean kill one in every ten. We think that Ben Franklin was being silly to worry about notice as a verb. Well, you know what? We're going to look pretty silly in a hundred years for worrying about impact as a verb and invite as a noun. The language is not going to change so fast that we can't keep up. Language just doesn't work that way. I hope that what you can do is find language change not worrisome, but fun and fascinating. Thank you.